Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. Kittle got banged up, Debo again. Uh, McCaffrey is, uh, he's, I, I'm telling you, uh, uh, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders. McCaffrey, I think, is the third best running back I've ever seen. For, yeah. How how fast was he on the sideline? On that on that play, um, I think it was an overtime to set up the field goal. How kind of juked him out, got to the corner. He's, I mean, he's a remarkable. I mean, player. he's he just ran past a corner, flew yeah. past him. It's interesting, though, because you know, they hit on Ayuk. They've got the kicker, a quarterback. Purdy's gonna be around. Both um, special. They Trent Williams, you 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 are a little long. You also can't pay two linebackers big money. They've got some decisions to make. Um, like I we I think we all know Kansas is going to be back and better the next year. They just have to find yeah. a number two receiver. They're, they're going to be fine. Um, San, when you look at San Francisco, do you um, you know they're not paying Purdy anything? Will they have to move off anybody? What do you think? Who? What do they draft? Where do they I, have I, to get I, a I, corner? I, I, I think Kittle, Kittle's, you know, getting up there in age now, makes a lot of money. You start investing in Brandon Ayuk. It's one of those things, you know, Kittle doesn't impact the game like Kelsey now in the passing game consistently. He's important to the run game. But once you start taking 15, 16, $17 million cap hit, Kyle, for being an offensive guy, wired like Andy Reid, they like investing in the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line needs to improve. They could always, he'll keep investing in the defensive line. Uh, Eric Armstead's another guy that makes a lot of money who's up there, but he's team captain. You know, they, these are complicated decisions. And this is where, if you want to sustain success, whether you're winning Super Bowls like the Chiefs did when they traded Tyreek Hill, or like San Francisco now, it's proven that you got to make tough decisions. And no one was better at it than, for 20 years than Belichick, right? And the media always used to crush them. How can you trade this guy? It's like, we don't have unlimited money in a salary cap league. So you got to make some tough decisions. And the 49ers are definitely going to have, I mean, Dre Greenlaw, poor his Achilles running out. To the field. Yeah. And, and now, he's a guy under contract, doesn't make that much money, but he's pretty important for them. And uh, what, one thing that I, I think both teams showed, and that John Lynch is really good because Kyle plays a big role, and Veach obviously is a stud. They have Both teams have good depth. They're, they're very, very good at developing players over the course of the season. I mean, how good was Jawan Jennings today? This, oh, is a seventh, this is a seventh-round player, and he's been making big plays for them for three years. So – being around the Niners at practice and knowing Coach Reed, a lot of similarities that young players get better. And one thing they really have on their side, which if you're going to get a legit starting quarterback making under a million dollars, I'm sorry, that's the best contract in the NFL. So you still got a couple years to work with that. And I think as long as you have that in your back pocket, that, that's, a, that's a pitch most teams don't have. I mean, think about right. the other teams in the NFC. The AFC is harder, even though the Chiefs have proven like they're unfazed by it. Dallas, a lot, lot of question marks with the Cowboys, right? Mike McCarthy, last year coaching. Eagles have a ton of question marks. They're hiring two coaches that have never worked with Sirianni. If they start slow, Kellen, a lot of weird stuff going on. Lions are pretty good, but, I mean, let's, yeah. that's the first big game Dan Campbell's ever won. So they, they got a long way to go to they could keep doing this. The Rams are coming, but Stafford's getting long in the tooth. Aaron Donald's getting old. The yeah. NFC, to me, is dramatically easier, right? I mean, the Ravens are going to be good. Burrow's coming back. Uh, Harbaugh now with with the Chargers, um, it just you you would imagine Miami gets better on defense. Yeah, but I I think the the road to the playoffs and in before the Super Bowl for San Francisco is dramatically easier than it would be in the AFC based on the quarterbacks you have to go through. So that that's another thing that benefits them. And I mean, who's the beside McVay and Kyle? Like, what are we talking about, right? In the uh, Sirianni, I, I like Dan Campbell, but. No one, no general manager in no, the league's I, taking Dan Campbell over Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, I mean, I if uh, to me, I think the Packers, I would pick the Packers to win the division over Detroit just because I think Jordan Love had huge growth, and that team is stacked with young they're, players. They're a team, too. I forgot about them. They're yeah. coming. Uh, Rams, I think, if they have another good draft, I mean, they just, McVay and Shanahan, you know, those are wars. Those are cerebral yeah. wars, academic, physical wars. The, um, you know... One of the bigger headlines, um, and I and I think I thought, I guess my take on Purdy is this. I thought he was really composed in the first half, like over. I thought he was kind of blew me away. I did think that there is a way, you know, people say there's a way to defend Lamar, put pressure on him. Well, there's a way to defend Purdy. It's pretty obvious. Now, 
Spags is great. So it's not like pretty struggled against, you know, this is a great defensive coordinator. Fantastic. And I'll say this, I think. Didn't Kansas, turn the ball over. Almost did at the end. Yeah. But. Yeah. I think, I think this defense by Kansas City is fast and twitchy. And I think people will now acknowledge, holy shit, it's really good. Um, but Baltimore kind of ate Purdy up a little bit. Um, I think Purdy played too well in this game for him to get a lot of heat. But the talk tomorrow will be, well, you know, you settle for a field goal. Mahomes gets a touchdown. Do you think Purdy will get any heat at all? No, I think it's more on Kyle. I, I, you know, you're making 900 grand. I mean, Kyle's making 15 million. He's the star of the show. One thing I, if I wanted to criticize Kyle, the play caller, and I think you see it with Andy, when part of the thing with Kyle is his offense is his offense, where Andy has adapted over the years a million. Yeah. He plays one way with Alex, he plays another way with Mahomes. Yes. yes. He used to pass probably too much. Now he has no problem running the ball. He realizes he's got that Belichick mindset of like, I'll do whatever it takes. Where Kyle's offense is his offense. Yeah, and yeah. one thing they do not do beside the play action rollout is just like a rollout. Snap the ball to him and get Purdy on the move. One of Purdy's defining characteristics, which no one really knew when he first started playing, which is evident now, is his mobility is pretty damn yes. good. Yeah. And Kyle doesn't ever get him on the move. What happened some, multiple times? There was a play early in the game, a throwback to Kittle that was negated with a penalty. Get him moving. He's an instinctive player. But that's yeah. not Kyle's offense because he doesn't have – Kyle does not have a drop-back passing offense. It's all tied to the run. Yes. And even when he gets past happy, it's still run fakes to the pass or a quick screen fake. That's part of Kyle's deal. And I wonder if he just adapts a little bit moving forward next year with Purdy because their team's still going to be really good. They're – probably be the betting favorite after the draft to win the NFC. But I do, I mean, you know, Andy only got there once with Philly and he lost it. He lost a lot of the championship games. And then next time he got back with Mahomes, he won it. And the rest is history. Now he's winning it. Kyle's been there twice now and lost in th this one in the longest overtime in league history, I and, would imagine. And in both games, outplayed Mahomes for at least three quarters. I was felt playing winning football. No it's one question. thing if you get it's one thing if you're the Denver Broncos playing that Seattle team, get your ass kicked. What are you gonna do? You know, it's just like damn, we were not you you have these type games. I don't know how he sleeps for a week because he, he's been around this long enough to know how hard it is to get back. Listen, I, I think they're gonna stay maintained being pretty good, but how many opportunities do you get where your team comes out ready? They had just looked pretty shitty the last couple of playoff games, out playing them, even in overtime, you drive first and score. If you could just somehow get a stop, maybe get him to miss a long field goal, and what happened? Mahomes makes a couple plays. Andy makes a couple great play calls. All of a sudden, they get a wide-open touchdown. It just ends. And I, I think one of the question marks, I would imagine in the Bay Area, that, that where Kyle had to call the timeout with Wilkes, this is the thing, and we, we've been talking about it for a while with Spags and, and Andy. He doesn't have to worry about Spags getting a job. He's going yeah. nowhere. So he has yeah. full trust in a great coordinator, where Kyle lost back-to-back -back coordinators who he knew, he felt comfortable with, and now he had to go outside. And clearly, like, Wilkes is solid. Like, he was good tonight. Not, But this is not exactly the 2019 Kansas City. You know, does Kyle think he's great? No. But, it, you know, you're kind of in no man's land with this guy as a defensive coordinator. He's not some great defensive coordinator. No. If they were all available, he's not a top-10 pick in the league. Right. So th th that, to me, is one question mark with the 49ers moving forward is how much trust – Kyle has in his defensive court. And there was a point this year where they lost three straight games. I thought he was going to get fired. Yeah. But they didn't really have anyone else on the staff. And then when you have to, how often does an offensive coach who's the head coach call a timeout because he doesn't like the look on defense after he gave up a blitz? It's, it's very, very rare. And even Romo's like, he probably did the right thing, but it's not like Andy doesn't even have to do that. And uh, I think, I don't know, maybe they yeah. just, they would have ran out of gas, even if, you know, Bill Belichick was their defensive coordinator.